But before I do that, we also have the cap of the threshold for the social security. So this would be the wages as long as it's under the threshold. Now I've got to break out the social security and Medicare to some degree because, because they're treated differently with regards to this cap. So let's start off this, let's say this was social security, let's say this is Medicare. And then I'm going to, I'm going to say this is going to be the income subject, subject to tax, uh, income subject to tax before, before cap. And then let's say that the cap for social security is, I'll put that here for reference, uh, 147,000, 147,000. So if I go over that number, then I'm not going to have any more social security past that number. I'm going to make these two black and white, black, white, and centered. The black didn't show up, white and centered. So there we go. And then I'm going to say, okay, so for the social security, it's got to be, it's let's, let's actually pull this over here. And I'm going to say it needs to be the lesser of these two numbers for social security. So, in the, so I'm going to say this is, I can use a min function. So it equals the min, the min, give me the smaller of these two numbers. You can also use an if number, if this number is bigger than that number, but the min is an, a, an easier calculation. And for this one, I'm just going to pick up the one, the, this number, because there's no cap. Although there could be a, an added Medicare calculation, which we might get into or might not be able to get into here. So I don't want to get too detailed on it. So there we go. So there's the there's our, our amount. And then we're going to multiply it by the rates. So rates, let's say the rates for Social Security. Social Security card. Remember, it would have been, if you look at your W-2, it would be 0 0.062 if you were an employee. But we're going to double that times two. I'm going to make that a percent. Home tab, number group, percentified, add some decimals. 12.4 this one's going to be if it it would be 0.0145 for an individual w2 employee but i'm going to multiply it times two because you're like the employer and employee portion so they hit you on both sides with that one so there we have it there's our percents so then i can say so then i can say the tax is going to be equal to this times this and this will be equal to this times this. And then I can equals the sum of these two. And this will be like the total for our simple, all our simple calculation. So I'm going to say this is the total. Let's make this black and white and centered. And we could see that that's going to be, you know, the total here. And so that looks good. So now I'm going to, I'm going to move this cell reference because this is where the cell reference is coming from on the, well, let's just do it this way. Let's say, let's go to my, my first page and say that this number needs to be coming from other taxes, other taxes. I'm just going to pick up this one for now. So it pulls up the proper number. And for my adjustments, I'm going to say this equals then my taxes other taxes this one divided by two and so there we have it so other taxes so this 14 130 and we're off by a dollar that's okay i'm cool with that all right so that's the that's the general that's the general idea all right so so now we could have a situation what if there was a loss if there was a loss we wouldn't have any self-employment tax, right? So I could go back on over here and say, okay, what if we had a loss? You could say this was 130,000. Now I'm going to go back on over and go, okay, Schedule C has a loss of 10,000. There is no Schedule SE because I don't have any income to record it on. So let's mirror that over here. If I go to the income statement, 130,000, 10,000 loss, pulling that onto my other taxes. So now see that, see, I, see, I'd like this to come out to zero and it comes out to a negative number. So what I'd like to do is make this cell be zero if it's less than one. So to do that, I can use an if a logic function. So I'm going to say equals if brackets 
if this times this is greater than zero, then, that's a comma, I would like you to do this times this. But if not, comma, do a zero. And I know I did that kind of fast because it's not an Excel course, but that's the general idea of the logic function. And so now we come up to a zero here and everything should, should mirror out properly in that case. So that should work out. All right, well, what about a scenario where we have income that's greater than the, the, the cap of the 147,000? Let's do that. Say, okay, what if we did that happen? Then I'm gonna say we had, let's say this was back. Let's just make this, let's make this 20,000 and this is gonna be uh, 100, let's say 200,000, 200,000. So now I have income of 180,000. So what's that gonna do to the schedule SE? It's gonna, it's gonna cap the social security side at the 147, but not the Medicare side. Medicare co-payments for a year. Side. And notice you might, see this is why you might be thinking, why couldn't I, if, let's do this back on over here. If I go, if I go, this was up to 200,000 and payments and credits. So then you might say, uh, income subject, that's not 200,000. K the heck paso, and this needs to be 20,000. Does that do it? Is that what I had over here? 200,000 200, minus 20,000. Yes, indeedy. All right, let's bring that on over here. So you might say, why can't I take this plus, why can't I take this that comes from there and just multiply it times from this plus this and would be that and you could if you didn't hit that cap because then you're just combining the social security and medicare but you can't because there's a cap on the medic on the social security if you have income over 147 so in this case notice what it did it said okay 180,000 times that percent gives us the 166230 for social security i capped it taking the the min the lesser of those two numbers but for medicare we did not cap it and so now you've got to multiply this one times the 12.4 social security rate and this one times the 2.9 so you could sum it up at the 2349 which is what we got over here right 2349 is that what we got 2349 boom so that's what happens if you have a loss or, or a situation that you go over the cap and you may not need to, to recalculate this this might be too much detail but you want to be able to kind of understand what's going to be happening as income level goes over that amount now the other thing just to note that it's possible that you have two schedule c's right if you had two businesses you'd have two schedule c's possibly i won't put in all the other information i'm just going to say the other one had income of twenty thousand, and if i pull that one over now, if I go to my Schedule C's, I got Schedule C 1 and 2. But the two Schedule C's are for the same Social Security number that we're using to pay in to kind of the equivalent of payroll taxes. So, so that means I can put those two Schedule C's together, the 20,000 and over here, the 180,000 to pull into the Schedule C with just Schedule SE with just one Schedule SE. However, if they were married, then as we, we've talked about this a little bit when we looked at the, the married before, but you could have a situation where they're married and then you have two separate businesses possibly by the two couples and then you would need two separate Schedule SEs, right? So if they're married, it's really important to say this isn't the taxpayer anymore, it's the spouse. So now they both have their own business. And so then if I pull that one over, now I've got two Schedule C's with two different businesses. And then I have two different Schedule SE's because for, for Noah and, and uh, Neo and, and Jane, because they have their own, because it needs to be applied to their own account. Note that that's really important because it's, so, it's something that can be easily overlooked because the net, the net impact on the total self-employment tax will likely be the same.